Global Netroots Nation. Thrilled to be here today. Thank you so much. An honor to speak after Council Member Ginn and the work she's doing in this city is so, so important. Uh, thanks to the staff here at the Convention Center, the hotel and transportation workers who make it possible for us to be here. As progressives, as progressives, we always acknowledge and celebrate and honor hourly wage earners who never make enough for their hard work. And we have to do more. Some years ago, I was in Cincinnati speaking to a Labor Federation dinner. There was a group of middle-aged women sitting at the table in front. They had just negotiated their first union contract with SEIU. Um, um, they were custodian workers and first, had first nego negotiated their first union contract with downtown Cincinnati business owners, 1,200 strong in the bargaining unit. There's one seat at the table I sat down and said, tell me what it's like. Today you signed your first union contract, right? She said, yeah. I said, tell me what it's like to have a union. And a woman turned to me and she said, this is the first time in 51 years I will now have a paid one-week vacation. That's what the union movement means in this country. That's what you mean to this country. That's what your activism means to this country. Special thank you, special thank you and shout out to Pulitzer Prize winning columnist Connie Schultz for being here. Connie. Connie's a brilliant writer. She's a champion for progressive values. You may not know a lot about me personally. You know a lot about Connie Schultz personally because so many of you follow her on Twitter and read her weekly column. We recently celebrated our 15th wedding anniversary and like like any journalist, Connie did her homework. She did her homework before agreeing to go out with me. So before, before agreeing to go out with me, she told me later that she checked my voting record. I was a, been a member of the House. If I would not had a 100% record on choice in gay rights, there would never have been a first date. I represent, I represent the great states, great swing state of Ohio in the United States Senate. Too often, thank you, too often I see political pundits, I see national Democrats act like we have to choose between fighting for our progressive values or winning elections. That is a false choice. The electability myth is, in fact, a myth. And, and let me tell you why. Donald Trump won Ohio by almost double digits in 2016. Last year I won re-election by seven points. I didn't. I didn't compromise on women's rights. I never compromise on LGBTQ rights. I never compromise on civil rights or workers' rights or voting rights. Years later, year, I'm sorry, years earlier, I voted against the Defense of Marriage Act, against NAFTA, against the Iraq War. I have a lifetime A from Planned Parenthood and a lifetime F from the NRA. I stood. I stood on the debate stage in the most conservative part of Ohio last year during my Senate race. I told those in the audience that climate change is, a defining, is the defining moral issue of our times and we must act. I, I went to the Columbus airport and joined protest against the Muslim ban. I called Donald Trump a racist because he was and he is. And I won the swing state of Ohio by seven points. Elections, elections aren't about some electability calculation. They are about one question. Whose side are you on? Are you on the side of workers or corporations? Are you on the side of consumers or Wall Street? Are you on the side of patients or drug companies? Are you on the side of voters or dark money? The theme, the theme of my 2018 campaign, and frankly my career, was dignity of work. Dignity of work is so much more than a campaign slogan. It's who I am, it's who we are, it's how we govern. Because when you love this country, you fight for the people who make it work, all people who make it work. Dignity of work means hard work should pay off for everyone, no matter who you are, no matter what kind of work you do, whether you punch a clock, whether you swipe a badge, whether you work for tips, whether you work on salary, whether you care for aging parents, whether you're raising children. 
It's about wages, it's about work schedule, it's about overtime, it's about collective bargaining, it's about health care, it's about child care, it's about economic justice. It's a progressive, it's a progressive economic message, and it's a winning message. Dignity of work comes from Dr. King, who understood better than anyone that worker rights and civil rights are intertwined and deeply connected. Dignity of work is not code for targeting white men who voted for Trump. That's a losing strategy. That's a betrayal of our values. <laughs> dignity, dignity of work unites all of us. It says to everyone, we see you, we honor your work, we respect you, we fight for you. We are on your side. On the other hand, Donald Trump uses phony populism to divide the country and to distract from the fact that he has betrayed workers, his White House looks like a retreat for Wall Street executives, except in the days it looks like a retreat for the gun lobby, his Supreme Court puts its thumb on the scales of justice, favoring corporations over workers, favoring Wall Street over consumers, favoring drug companies over sick people, favoring dark money over voters. That's not populism. Populism is never racist. Populism is never anti-Semitic. Populism doesn't push some people down to lift other people up. Populism doesn't pass tax cuts for the richest 1%. Populism doesn't try to control women's bodies. Populism doesn't rip children from their parents' arms and put asylum seekers in cages. Populism is none of that. We love this country. We, never, we must never give up the hallowed ground of patriotism to the extremists, whether they're in state houses or in the White House. Dr. King, Dr. King taught us human progress never rolls in on the wheels of inevitability. Human progress never rolls in on the wheels of inevitability. It rolls in because we push, because you push. It rolls in, it's why you're here, that's, why you, that's what you do every day. I'll, I'll leave you with a story as I depart. I, I mentioned earlier that Connie and I joined the airport protests against Trump's Muslim ban. Joining Connie and me were my daughter, who is a legal services lawyer, an immigration lawyer for, Ohio, for legal services in Ohio, and our, then our, our oldest granddaughter, Jackie, who was just three years old. It was Jackie's first political, three-year-old Jackie's first political rally, and she held up her first political sign. Now, she had written, she had drawn that sign, she had written that sign, and to most of you, if you had seen Jackie's sign that she was holding up, you would have thought it looked like the scribble, the scribbles of a three-year-old. But to her grandfather, with my grandfatherly x-ray vision, I could, see, I could see that sign, what that sign said was rage against the fascist machine. <laughs> Thank you for your activism. Enjoy the rest of Network State. Thank you so much.